Dubai and Bali are probably the two most popular locations for digital nomads, expats, and online business owners. And I know what you're thinking, but aren't Dubai and Bali like the complete opposite kinds of places? They have totally different vibes, they're totally different kinds of places. So why are you comparing them against each other? And that's actually kind of why I'm making this video. Because a lot of expats, digital nomads, who are thinking about where to move to, will think of Dubai and Bali as two options because they're so popular for these kinds of people but they might not know exactly which kind of vibe is right for them. When I was leaving the UK and I was considering where to move to, I considered both of these places and I wasn't quite sure which one of these locations could be right for me, the kind of person I am. So now that I've lived in Dubai for one and a half years and now that I've also spent a month living in Bali, I wanted to give you my thoughts on the differences between these two places, which are many, and specifically which one of these would be right for you, depending on the kind of person you are, depending on what you are looking for and your preferences. So first, let's talk about something very important from a practical perspective, and that is visas and residency. How easy, practically, is it actually to move to one of these places? Well, luckily, both of these places are going to have a visa option for you. If you want to go there, you can. So let's briefly go over this. Dubai, out of the two of these, is going to be more streamlined. It's going to be easier, and it's going to be quicker as well. They have a very streamlined process that's going to take at maximum around a month. The way most people are going to move to Dubai is by setting up a company, number one, and then hiring them themselves as either the manager or director of that company and then essentially giving them an employment visa or like an investor visa. The one thing to look out for in Dubai though is that there's a lot of bad actors in the sort of Dubai business setup industry. They're going to lure you in with apparently very cheap prices but in reality they're going to cheap out on everything and they're going to add on a lot of hidden fees that they're not going to tell you about in the beginning. But if you're looking for a reputable agency that's going to offer you a western standard like a very high quality service who's going to understand your business, who's going to be able to tell you exactly what you should do and who are not going to charge you crazy prices. The fee that they charge is actually extremely, extremely reasonable. You can reach out to my business partners down below. They offer a free 45 minute consultation where you can speak to them directly, like the actual people who are going to help you. They can explain to you how everything works, whether Dubai makes sense for you, so you know exactly what the process is going to entail and then you can use their services if you want to. That link is going to be down below, so book that free call if you're interested in it. Dubai. On the side of Bali, there's kind of different options depending on what you're looking for. The one that a lot of people who they temporarily are doing is that you can simply get a tourist visa and then before the tourist visa expires, you do what's called a visa run. So you go to a different country, you come back, you get a tourist visa again, and you essentially do that into perpetuity. For the long term, that's probably not what I'd want to do. I would want to have a legit visa. So for that, there's a couple of options. The one that I would perhaps be most looking for is the B211A. What I like about it is that you're explicitly allowed to work on this visa in Indonesia, whereas with a tourist visa, you're technically not allowed to work in the country. Although again, obviously a lot of people do that. Anyway, this visa is going to cost 10 million rupiah and that's around 645 US dollars. And the way it's going to work is that you get it for 60 days and then you can extend it again for another 60 days two times. So essentially this visa is going to last for up to 180 days. So if you want to live there for half the year as like a secondary base, which is what I would be using Bali for, I'm considering it as like a secondary, like a summer base, with Dubai is my other base in the winter, then this visa is going to work extremely well. However, if you want to live in Bali full time, you could use this visa and just get two of them in the entire year. Or you could look at the other category of visas that are called KETAS. Now, these are essentially longer term stay visas. They're going to allow you to open bank accounts in the country, actually work in the country and things like this. There's multiple categories. Most likely, however, you'd be looking at the investor KETAS. Now, the thing about the investor KETAS, however, is that you would essentially need to have a legit business in India. Indonesia with 10 billion rupiah in investment. Now, the thing that a lot of agencies that are going to offer this visa in the country are not going to tell you is about this 10 billion rupiah investment. And they'll just make some fake documents to the government to make it seem like you have this investment. And it can work, but essentially at any time, if the government comes and audits you or something like that, you could be in a lot of trouble. So I don't recommend doing this option. I will leave all the info about these different visas so you can look at the different criteria, the different details down below in the description. Now let's talk about taxes. Dubai is again going to be a lot more simple because they just have 0% income tax. Very, very easy no hoops to jump through, no gray areas, anything like that. On the corporate side, they now have their 9% tax, but what a lot of people won't tell you is that unless you make 
over $816,000 a year in revenue, you're not going to have to pay this tax because they have what is called the small business exemption. That means that if you make below that amount in revenue, you're going to be exempt from this corporate tax. In Indonesia, it's slightly, like I wouldn't say complicated, but there's a few things to consider. First of all, if you live in Indonesia for less than 183 days, you're not going to be an Indonesian tax resident. Where it gets slightly more murky is if you do stay over that, but you're on the B2 11a visa in that case you would technically be an indonesian tax resident however based on the research i was doing what actually happens is that you physically cannot pay tax to the government because to pay tax to the government you need to have this like tax id which you can only get if you're a citizen or if you're on a kita so one of those longer term living visas so really if you're on this visa and you're staying longer basically apparently people just aren't paying tax anyway but this is not tax advice anything do your proper research if you're gonna do that but this is what i could find in terms of location both of these have i think a really great location but for different reasons bali is obviously in southeast asia so that gives you access to the entire southeast asia a very short flight away from thailand singapore malaysia all these countries even australia dubai however offers a really great location because it's basically in the middle between europe and asia so it's not super close to anything besides the different countries in the gulf region like qatar saudi arabia but it is semi close to a lot of places like europe you could go to africa you could go southeast asia so I really love having it as a base because I like going to Asia and it's not too far from Asia, but it's also reasonably close to Finland where I'm from. So when I go visit family there, it's not too bad. Or if I want to go to Europe, not that I'm really going to Europe that much anymore, but it's reasonably close to a lot of places. So both of these locations are, in my opinion, really great. Now let's talk about the weather. Now, obviously both of these are very hot places, but there are actually pretty big differences between the two climates of these places. Bali is essentially very hot and very humid and it's kind of very consistent. It's going to be always between like 29 to 32 degrees during the day. What they do have is the rainy season and the dry season. And for me, it actually works kind of well because the rainy season is going to be in winter, so like January, February, March, April. And that is precisely the time of the year when I want to be in Dubai. Whereas in the summer, when I don't want to be in Dubai, Bali has their dry season. So it could work as a really good combo with Dubai if you want to have both of these places as a basis. Dubai, however, sort of has, to me, perfect weather for around four, five, six months of the year, kind of on the hot side for a couple of months of the year and just way too hot for basically June, July, August, almost September as well. It's very dry. It barely ever rains. But the con of Dubai weather, obviously, is the summer. It's just way too hot. It'll get to like 40 plus degrees and you kind of don't want to be there. Although really, like, it's not that bad. Depends on how much time you actually want to spend outside. Everything inside is going to be air conditioned. You have taxis, you have the malls, restaurants are condition but for me it's not a problem and in terms of the overall vibe of these two places like this is where they really differ like i feel like they cater to a slightly different type of person now what dubai is is a very big modern city it's a very work centric place it's the kind of place where people go to build big businesses it's a really sort of motivating place like you see all this luxury around you the pro of that is that if you are a very type a kind of person like i am it's going to really motivate you it's going to really show you like the sort of level of wealth that are out there it's going to make you think like okay if all of these people could do it i can do it as well and it's had a real impact on my productivity the downside of it is that it can make you more materialistic it can make you perhaps too focused on all these materialistic things because you see these cars you're like oh i really want this all this but at the same time you have a lot of amazing activities you can go on yachts you can drive fancy cars you can do all these activities it's a big tourist city like all these things to do great food everything like this and obviously all of that is going to cost money so in dubai usually i'll work for like 90 percent of the time and then 10 percent of the time we'll go do something really exciting we'll go drive a supercar on things like this so you can really work hard and play hard in dubai bali however is a lot more relaxed it's a lot more of like a holiday vibe it's a kind of place where people go to chill like these stereotypical surfer boys who are just like working on their laptops a bit maybe they make a couple of grand a month and then they really focus on the lifestyle of like the cheap cost of living great food like friendly locals like a lot more of a relaxed kind of vibe so one of these vibes is gonna work for one type of person if you're a very type a kind of person
person like myself, then perhaps Dubai could be more for you. Whereas if you're more relaxed, you're more about like work-life balance, then Bali is probably going to be more for you. And this is a good transition in the kinds of people that these places attract. Now, based on the descriptions that I just gave you, it's really pretty obvious that Dubai is going to attract the most serious kind of entrepreneur, someone who makes a lot more money, someone who's looking for that big city infrastructure around them. Whereas Bali is going to attract the more relaxed kind of person, someone who's more on the digital nomad kind of side rather than an entrepreneur. Now, in terms of food, both of these places are going to have really great international food, really great Western food. Dubai is going to be around double the cost to eat out, even perhaps slightly more. So if you're cost conscious and you like eating great food, then Bali is perhaps going to be more for you. So they're different in the cost, but the other place where they differ is that on top of this Western international food, Bali being in Indonesia is obviously also going to have a lot of Asian, specifically Indonesian food. Whereas Dubai being in the Middle East is going to have amazing Middle Eastern food. And me personally, I love Middle Eastern food. I love Lebanese food, Arabic food, things like this. And Dubai just has so much amazing Arabic food, obviously, because it's in the Middle East. And for me, Indonesian food wasn't all that special. It's not bad, but it wasn't my favorite. So for that reason, for me, subjectively, I give a slight edge to Dubai simply because I just love Middle Eastern food. But Bali, obviously, also really, really amazing. In terms of cost of living, to the surprise of absolutely no one, Dubai is significantly more expensive. With that said, however, Bali is nowhere near as cheap as perhaps a lot of the other locations around Southeast Asia. When I left Bali a couple of days ago, I came here to Thailand and I instantly noticed that here basically everything is like half the cost compared to, well, Changu, which is where I was, which is obviously the most expensive area around Bali. But when it comes to money, everything always depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing Bali to Dubai or London, then obviously it's going to be very cheap. So again, if you're very cost conscious, where that is a very big difference to you, then that's going to give a big edge to Bali. Of course, again, in Dubai, the advantage that you get is that you get tax residency in a 0% tax jurisdiction. So usually, again, if you're the kind of person where you're making 10K a month or above, then those tax savings are going to be really, really important. You're probably going to prefer Dubai as a main residency. Whereas if you make below that, you make like two, $3,000 a month, then it doesn't really matter to you if you still have a tax residency in a higher tax place because you're not really paying that tax anyway. So really, it again, depends on your income level, what makes more sense. Now let's talk about safety. Now, both of these places are actually extremely safe. Dubai is obviously going to be at a whole different level. It's one of the safest cities in the world, but Bali is also extremely, extremely safe. So if you're coming from the West, both of these places are going to offer great safety. Obviously, as a man, this is less of a worry to me, but I've spoken to women who live in both of these places and in both of them, they've all said that it's extremely safe. They never feel unsafe going out at night. So that is really, really great. Now, as a conclusion, I love both of these places, but for different reasons. They offer very different vibes, different benefits, different pros and cons. For me, for my personality, I think Dubai is still the kind of place that I want to have as my main base. It just offers more in terms of networking. It makes me dream and want to build big things. It offers me really easy 0% tax residency. I can have my company there, my banking there. I'd much rather have my company and banking in the UAE than I would have them in Indonesia. But Bali could be a really great sort of second base for me. For a couple of months of the year, if I'm looking for that more relaxed vibe, I want that island vibe. Then I could really see myself being there and sort of combining these two places that sort of complement each other quite well. I have a pretty simple conclusion to this. If you are a serious entrepreneur, you want to build big things and or if you're making a lot of money, then Dubai is probably going to be more your vibe. But if you are perhaps just starting out as a digital nomad, entrepreneur, you don't make as much money yet, so the taxes don't make a big difference and you're perhaps looking for a more relaxed lifestyle, then Bali is probably going to be more your vibe. Again, if you're looking to move to either of these places, I will leave all the resources down below in the description. If you're looking to move to Dubai, then you can reach out to my business partners now below. You can book that free meeting with them and they will explain everything and then you can see if it is right for you. With that said, if you want to see another video about specifically moving to Dubai, you can watch this video. If you're interested in hearing my full thoughts on living in Bali for 30 days, you can watch this video right here. With that, I will see you in the next one.